Restoring Zebra Swallow Tales to Pittsburgh 2.01, a story of loss and potential renewal. The Zebra Swallow Tail is a beautiful butterfly that used to be in Pittsburgh. It is now not very far away, an hour drive actually, but it's not here. We can and should bring the Zebra Swallow Tail back to Pittsburgh. Corrections and updates included in this version. The Zebra Swallow Tail Protographia Marcellus has a specific host plant, which is the pawpaw tree. Asimina Trilloba. It lays its eggs on the pawpaws. Its caterpillars eat nothing but pawpaw leaves. Without pawpaws, there are no zebra swallowtails. In the Pittsburgh area, pawpaw patches that were common in the past are now spread too far apart to reliably support the zebra swallowtail, so it is no longer here. Heavy industrial development, especially steel mills, destroyed the majority of pawpaw patches. Zebra swallowtails rarely stray more than a mile from a pawpaw patch. Pawpaw trees need to be restored if we want zebra swallowtails to return. We need pawpaw corridors, not a series of oases. Remember, zebra swallowtails do not go more than a mile or two away from a pawpaw patch. Pawpaws themselves do not spread unless the population reaches a critical mass. Gonna pause here to admit that I am making absolutely sure that you understand the connection between pawpaws and zebra swallowtails by being repetitive. Got it? Okay, uh, moving on. <laughs> Passive restoration is the norm for areas devastated by various industries. Pawpaws are one plant that does not spread like other plants. It, like the avocado, had two time periods where it spread most efficiently. One with the dispersal of various megafauna, and later when the First Nations came to the Americas, except for the fact that people love avocados, so we've, we've helped beyond that. It was the development of fossil fuel in various industries supported by fossil fuels that made the pawpaw become rare in many areas, including the Pittsburgh area. As these industries became less devastating, many plants and the animals that they supported returned, but not the pawpaw. Passive restoration is where environmental stressors such as fossil fuel extraction and heavy industry, in this case, are removed and colonization by plants and animals takes place naturally. Animals subjected to early fossil fuel extraction and industrial developments can be overlooked, especially if the damage was done before or during the early 20th century. Pawpaws, for reasons that I will explain, require active restoration. Pawpaws and therefore zebra swallowtails existed in more areas than is currently recognized. I believe that they used to exist in a large part of northwestern Pennsylvania. I have documented a wild patch of pawpaws inside of this red outline on this map. The green represents Asima Trilobas range. I think that the red outlined area likely had many pawpaws before the oil rush of the 1860s. There's other locations where pawpaws were likely common, such as New York City. I have found in my research that pawpaw swallows tails probably did fly over New York City, and that would not be possible without pawpaws. 120 years ago. This emoji graph represents my conclusion about the history of past animal dispersion, known as zoochery, of pawpaws that I came to that is relevant to their sustainability. Each emoji is one to three miles or two to five kilometers. Megafauna, early day, mastodons, giant camels, giant ground sloth, beavers, etc. Pretty good, several million years. Native Americans, mostly, numerous unnamed tribes, and the current animals, except for feral pigs, several thousand years. Very good. Ah, current days, raccoons, feral pigs, deer, skunks, people, and turtles. Several hundred years, the pawpaw co-evolved with the various megafauna, mastodons in particular. They were dispersed further, for Native Americans planted them much like they planted other crops, including corn, beans, and squash, and so on. People brought them north of past glaciers, which were impassable to the megafauna. While people are still planting them, it is typically not in a naturalized manner. I think that naturalized plantings, especially by waterways, would be most beneficial. As I said before, passive restoration has been the norm for most areas, and many plants and animals in these areas have returned. This is not true for pawpaws. I have come to believe, and actually know, that pawpaws used to exist in many more places than are recognized. Here's a creek in Venango County that still has 19th century pipelines running through it. 
It is possible that this creek had pawpaws along it before the gold rush, oil rush of the 1860s. I will run some slides showing how much real estate the steel industry uses because it is the primary cause of the disappearance of the zebra swallowtail and pawpaw patches in the Pittsburgh area. My brief summary of why steel was terrible. Gaia Suta and George serve as a prelude to future developments. Here are some aspects of steel production that uses up real estate that formerly supported pawpaw patches and zebra swallowtails. Steel mills. JNL, my favorite steel mill. Pig iron blast furnace, Cary Furnace, National Historic Landmark. Coal coking oven, pictured here as Claritin Coke Works, one of the biggest polluters in Allegheny County. Slag dump, brown stump, West Mifflin's mountain of slag. Gaseous emissions and metal dust. Pittsburgh famously used to have its street lights on all the time. Coal mines, for the time frame in which the zebra swallowtail disappeared from the immediate Pittsburgh area, underground mines. Mine tailings, still a problem for many waterways. Coal dump, also called gob piles, somewhere in Pennsylvania. Transportation, mostly barges and trains. Housing, south side slopes. These folks carved out the hills for homes and coal to keep things warm, souring the sweet springs which forced them to seek water from the river and get cholera. The last nine slides show what took up lots of real estate that supported many organisms. As I said before, passive restoration has allowed many plants and animals to return, but not the pawpaw nor the zebra swallowtail. To illustrate this clearly, I will compare three host plants and their butterflies. This will help show why the pawpaw needs our help. Milkweed, pawpaws, and spicebush. These are host to monarchs, zebra swallowtails, and spicebush swallowtails. Monarchs lay eggs on milkweed, zebra swallowtails lay on pawpaws, and spicebush swallowtails lay on spicebush. I will score each on how difficult it is for them to reproduce and spread with a no check for each factor that makes it harder. We'll start with germination requirements. Common milkweed requires cold stratification and it can grow just about anywhere. Pawpaws require cold stratification and constant moisture. It needs a shady moist area, but not too moist. It also needs warmth to germinate after cold stratification. Spice bush requires cold stratification and constant moisture. It needs a fairly moist area, growth requirements and reproductive requirements. Milkweed needs two or three years until it blooms and produces seed pods. It blooms in the heart of summer and is pollinated by many insects. Its pods produce 100 plus seeds and each plant produces several pods. Pawpaws need two years of growth in the shade until they're about 18 inches tall. Then they need at least three or more years of growth. Then they need sun. They need cross-pollination. Their flowers are protogenous, which I will explain later on. They also bloom in the spring and can lose their fruit if there is a late frost. They are pollinated by insects that are attracted to fermented odors. Wild pawpaws have 1 to 12 seed per fruit. Number of fruit per tree in the wild is typically low, especially in areas where they are rare. Spice bush requires three to six years from seed to bloom. The plants are male and female, so only the female produces fruit. They bloom in the spring, but endure frost. Female spice bush have 50 to several hundred berries, each with one seed. And now the protogeny. I include this explanation because I keep seeing people making confusing assumptions about pawpaw sex. Protogenous of a hermaphrodite flower or animal having the female reproductive organs come to maturity before the males. How pawpaw flowers work. Pistil is receptive to fertilization. Pistil stops being receptive. Stamens develop and release pollen. This is why it is rare for pawpaws to self-pollinate. So here we have a female form of the flower. Reminds me of something. Female. And uh, then we have the male form of the flower, which sort of reminds me of something male. And, um, okay, do you understand now? Protogeny. It's kind of weird, but it's gender bending, but it's kind of nice to see shit like that. Okay, seed dispersion. Milkweed. Air. The seeds only need light wind to disperse and grow just about anywhere. Milkweed also produces a large number of seeds. Most land close, but a few travel far. Pawpaw, various mammals. The range of the various animals that still consume the fruit is not good. The distance goes from 1 to 10 miles, mostly around 3 miles or less, which is far less than mastodons, who if they are like elephants, travel 50 miles or more in herds. 
That is a significantly shorter distance. Native Americans of the past may have ranged the farthest. Spice bush, bird droppings. Birds are an efficient way to distribute seeds as they fly very far, but they tend to drop them when they are resting on branches, not while in flight. This is, however, better for meeting specific requirements. My seed dispersion emoji graph. Ultimately, inefficient seed dispersal is the most important factor for why pawpaws are rare in many areas where they used to be common. Spicebush and milkweed have not had their method of seed dispersal disrupted. Each emoji represents one to three miles or two to five kilometers. Milkweed, when fairly distant, most land nearby, but a few can travel far. Quite good. Pawpaws, various mammals, and a turtle. For wild pawpaws, it just doesn't go that far. Spice bush, small birds, pretty far. Probably better than milkweed. And so here we got our anti-resiliency check totals. Milkweed gets five. It's not dandelion, but it's pretty good. Papa gets 20, which is terrible. And spice bush gets seven. Papas get more no checks and are clearly at a disadvantage when it comes to being resilient when they have been removed from an area. The last series of slides illustrates why pawpaws are considered to be an anachronistic organism. I would like to note that there are other anachronistic organisms that require active restoration, both locally and other parts of the United States and the world. In the Pittsburgh area, and really much of the East Coast, the pawpaw is one of the most obvious anachronistic organisms. To be clear, an anachronistic organism is a species that is best explained as a result of having been favorably selected in the past due to coevolution with other biological species that have since become extinct. Pawpaws coevolved with megafauna, mastodons in particular, that were largely responsible for dispersing their seeds. Now that mastodons do not exist, the only organism that disperses their seed in a sustainable manner is us. What needs to happen? Pawpaws are what zebra swallowtails need to exist and will not return on their own. These are the steps that need to be taken. One, find the limits of the zebra swallowtail, past and present, especially present. Two, create pathways that would make promising pawpaw corridors. Three, find the wild pawpaw patches and promising areas for patches along the pathways. Four, plant pawpaws along these pathways. Why is this worth the effort? In 2021, there was a fish kill on Chartier's Creek, one of my target corridors. Thousands of fish suddenly died after heavy rains. The cause in this case was a fungicide, maybe a buffer zone between areas and waterways should exist, even if it is fairly narrow. There still is an ongoing investigation, so I don't know who is responsible. Do we need landscapes like this? This is not what the banks of a waterway should look like. Runoff is rapid and very often deadly toxic when an oopsie, that chemical we are using to keep this fairway nice has spilled, inevitably occurs. Pretty sure that the fish kill came from a spill on a space just like this. Chartier's Creek. 10% of the population of the U.S. is downstream of this. Anyway, besides repairing riparian zones, pawpaws help many other species, some as small as the butterfly, but also everything up the food chain. Pawpaws reduce erosion and reduce flooding. Pawpaws reduce the chances of pollutants going downstream. Pawpaws are a future food source for people. Pawpaws potentially combat invasive plants. Pawpaws were removed by us and should be restored by us. Pawpaws are ultimately a big part of riparian ecology in much of the eastern United States, not just the southeastern United States especially with climate change. Riparian ecology is a biome associated with the areas just above rivers, creeks, lakes, and other waterways. A healthy riparian zone in the Pittsburgh area includes pawpaw trees. A healthy riparian zone improves the quality of water for everyone downstream of us. I believe that restoring healthy riparian zones is the best reason to restore pawpaws. Ultimately, this will include many other species of plants and animals but it has to include pawpaws. So as I said before, this is what needs to happen. Okay, pawpaws and zebra swallowtails, they gotta be together. Find the limits of the zebra swallowtail, past and present, create pathways, make promising corridors 
Find the well pawpaw patches and promising areas. Plant pawpaws along the path to fill the gap. This has been the hardest part of the video for me to write. I think rather than reading through each slide, I will paraphrase and leave them up if you are that curious. I have already presented a lot of information that might be hard to retain. I want to leave you inspired, not overwhelmed. There really is a lot that needs to happen, but each step brings the zebra swallow closer to us. So here I go. Finding Pittsburgh Pathways. For zebra swallow tail trails. It starts with thy naturalist. It's useful for finding both zebra swallow tails and pawpaw trees. The red pins are zebra reports and the green pins are pawpaw reports. Here's the zebra swallow tail reports that are closest to Pittsburgh. I've mapped them out. There are very specific locations on this slide here. Uh, do we create them? There's quarters. Some of them aren't bicycle paths, but maybe the waterways are better. Uh, one interesting new location is Johnstown, not on this map, um, but I know there will be more as time goes on. So we got bicycle paths and waterways. Waterways are probably better. Um, so waterways and rail trails, they include five specific directions, west, southwest, south, southeast, and east. Um, on both, uh, north is looking possible too, um, but okay, so one thing that's important to understand is pawpaw density needed on these pathways. They need to be planted three to five at half mile intervals. That seems to be a minimum that they would need to um, be little stepping stones, little breadcrumbs for these, these butterflies and also to spread the pawpaws. So here's um, some of the target pathways, including the mileage for east, for some of them. Um, I'm not going to read out all these numbers, kind of adding some on the bottom, but it's a lot as I find more, more reports of pawpaws, more reports of butterflies, and also rail trails, more and more are being built every day. So um, I'm going to give you a total guess. So... I think that I need to plant 3,000 to 4,000 if we're comprehensive, and we're probably going to pick and choose based on the amount of interest in different areas and um, other factors. So to make these pawpaws work again, we need surveys to identify any remaining pawpaw patches. Keep finding more. Surveys to identify areas that are hospitable to pawpaws. Thanks, traffic. Pawpaws to be planted in good locations pawpaw plantings to be monitors for several years, and zebra swallowtails. Uh, there's more things. Uh, we're going to collect seeds from fruit and do things with the seeds to keep them alive, catalog the locations, collect science for cross-graftings, cross-graft in fertile pat patches. That's something I haven't really gotten into, but it's complicated. Educate people in the areas where they need restorations. Uh, there's other shit there. Um, acquiring pawpaw plants starting them from seeds initially with anything I could find. Now I'm just going with uh, native patches. And um, though I'm not too picky, it, there's so much involved in starting seedlings. Um, but anyway, I think that that's a good option. And also planting stratified seeds, depending on the circumstances. I still don't know what the best way to go is. But, you know, I'm kind of doing both and I'm willing to do both. Uh, other ways to spread papas or actually get fruit from them um, is grafting branches from genetically distinct trees onto wild trees because sometimes a patch is a clone of just one tree and then there's also hand pollination but hand pollination doesn't seem too feasible so in 2022 I started grafting largely in fertile patches and hopefully that will increase their productivity of fruit I mean there's other factors so we'll see how it works I think in some cases it definitely will help they're definitely getting enough light there's other things going on hand pollination doesn't seem like a good idea because wild patches are super tall and i'd need extra tools to do that and um so like in collecting the scions that's a very seasonal thing it has to be done in late spring or i mean sorry late winter or early spring and then i have to store them for a while and then i can graft them onto whatever tree i want to and uh so that means repeating 
visiting these patches over and over again and waiting a few years. So one thing I think is going to be very important is assigning area to stewards. And here I have Allegheny, the Allegheny River, the first 15 miles, or actually the last 15 miles, showing the point of Pittsburgh going up to Springdale. And um, there's a lot of people in that area who are interested. That's why I kind of chose that to start with. It might be the first thing I get other people to do for me. Um, but in the meantime, the Monongahela is on the Great Allegheny Passageway, which has allowed a lot of access. But a lot of the spaces there aren't great. Um, so I've, I've done some planting there, but I'm not quite sure how well they've taken. Because um, there's a lot of issues with these pathways that are not like just on the water. I mean, there's like all these ruins of steel mills and whatnot. And uh, anyway, um, another space is the Ohio River. Haven't been able to get to that. Definitely looking into having people help me, especially people on boat. We'll see what happens with that. Um, let's see, what is my next slide? And again, these are the endpoints. Oh yeah, Chartier's Creek. I have been checking that a lot. Um, there's actually a number of wild pawpaw patches on the creek, largely infertile, but I've been taking steps to increase that, including um, cross grafting. So maybe the fruit productivity will be better in a few years. <laughs> All this waiting we gotta do. Um, anyway, Chartier's Creek is kind of dear to my heart. So here we've got the Ohio River. We've got the western part in West Virginia. Uh, the zebra swallowtails are definitely in Wellsburg. Um, not sure how far they get up, but just so you can see, so you got the, the beginning point of the butterfly and the end point at the point. This map here shows the whole loop and I kind of have like a little um, kind of green fruit emoji there to split it up into like 15 mile segments. And I'm hoping that I can assign these areas to different stewards. I mean, I'm going to check in and do shit, you know, but it'd be so much easier if I had people like take up a lot of the slack. So I, I'm going to state again, the zebra swallowtail used to exist in the Pittsburgh area, but it's disappeared sometime in the early to mid 20th century. I hope this brief presentation will make you want to help bring this zebra swallowtail back. Okay, so I've been doing this on my own for a while. Um, it's going to take a while, maybe decades, maybe a decade if I get help. We'll see. So I've got a laundry list of things that I'd like from you. Can you join me on hikes? Can you go kayaking with me? Can you work independently on the pathways, maybe? Um, at the moment, I'm breaking up the pathways into smaller pieces that I can delegate to 50 people. <laughs> I think this might be the most important thing that I can do. If I can get you guys to do shit. Um, send me money. Give me a bigger boat or a lonely one. Um, suggest other part. Oh, wait. Oh, I'm going all over the place. I, I got my slides mixed up. Loan me one or use your boat to do stuff. Suggest other important pathways. Be blah, 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 blah. Lots of things going on. Um, let me do presentations by Zoom or in person. Tell me your ideas. Um, we can do it. We will do it. With your help, you'll do it sooner. Um, yeah, can you help me make some good videos? And I got some music that I want. I, I got a song. Okay, here we go. Ready? One, two. Three, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. A song. Protogeny, 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 protogeny. I start off female, I start off female. My pistol hangs downward, accepting pollen, accepting pollen, carried by beetles and flies. Protogeny, 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 protogeny. And later on, my pistol faith that can no longer be fertilized. 
but at the same time my stamens develop and start to release pollens for flies. Protogeny, 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 protogeny. The pollen emanates from the flowers to the fresher flowers out there. As a flower fades, it is male, but it can fertilize a young floral. Protogeny, 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 protogeny. Um, okay. <laughs> uh, was that terrible? Um, okay, I want a choir. I want a ban. Okie dokie. Now I'm going to ask people for money. It is less important for me than it was before as I figured out how to get this going, but I most definitely could use some cash. So, <laughs> $50 or more donation will be rewarded with a gorgeous hand stenciled plywood plaque measuring ah, five by seven. I don't know. Um, if you don't want to be that generous for 25 bucks, I'll give you a gorgeous hand stenciled corrugated plastic piece measuring six by eight. Ah. Um, you can contact me at pawpaw at t-k.org. Send money. I am happy to send you pretty plywood, but consider being generous just because I need it for gas, potting soil, more seaworthy boats, a roof rack, durable trowels, hiking boots, wetsuit, other things. PayPal at gobism at gmail.com. And, you know, please like, comment, and subscribe. You know, that thing. <laughs> if you are a descendant of any of these robber barons, then I think you should give me money because they're the guys that did all this bad stuff. I mean, they didn't kill Mastodons, but I honestly don't know exactly how to make this happen, but I do know it will happen. So please help me in whatever way you can. My goal ultimately is to bring the zebra swallowtail back to Pittsburgh before I die. Every day I learn something new and more and more that comes from interacting with people like you. It is inspiring and very much worth the effort. I am slowly gaining support for this effort, which I know will increase. Thank you for watching this and I hope to hear from a lot of you soon. I really do. I really enjoy meeting people. I really enjoy doing this stuff. And um, I don't know. It's worth it. It's fun. It should happen. Yeah, Mastodon's phone come back. Um, and there's Shumai. I miss him very much. Love you, Shumai. Bye.